Hello, my name is Mark Baggett. I'm the course author of SANS SEC 573 Python for Penetration Testers. Today I want to talk to you about detecting random, how we can find algorithmically chosen DNS names inside of our packets and being transmitted across our network. I'd like to invite you to join me September 14th of this year in Las Vegas, Nevada for SEC 573 Python if you'd like to learn how to create tools such as the one I'm going to show you here today. So first, let's talk about just how difficult it is to detect random. So one approach for finding randoms that works in most cases is using ENT, e -N -T, to detect the entropy in files. But here you can see I'll run head minus C, and I'll just take the first 100,000 bytes of dev u random, and I'll pipe that through ENT, and you can see that its entropy is 7.9. So something that is perfectly random has an entropy of around 8. Then I'll take Python and I'll have Python print a string that is 100,000 A's long, which has absolutely no entropy. There's no randomness in a string of 100,000 A's. And there you can see that its entropy is uh, about 0 0.001. So 8, very random, 0, not random. So now let's measure the entropy of some host names. Let's look at uh, Google. Google's entropy is 2.23. Uh, the entropy of something like Clearinghouse, uh, the entropy of Clearinghouse is 3.7. So normal host names are in the range of 2 to 4. If we take random characters pounded on the keyboard, you can see that that's 2.8. We'll pound on the keyboard again here randomly. And now we get more randomness of 3.14. Once more, pounding on the keyboard. I'll get rid of that semicolon. And here this randomness is, again, 2.8. So things that are random and things that are legitimate host names both are in the 2 to 4 range. And here I even ran int on some known bad malicious hosts. These host names are associated with Skybot and Styx malware. Those known malicious hosts, which are random-looking, Ent has an entropy that says they're approximately the same as our known good hosts. So here's the approach I want to take for detecting these malicious random hosts. There are certain character pairs that appear quite frequently in normal English text. For example, TH, QU, and ER. If you have a letter T, there's approximately a 40% chance that it's going to be followed by an H, and if you have a Q, there's approximately a 97% chance that's going to be followed by a U. Now there's other character pairs that are very unlikely in normal English text. For example, WZ, if you have a W, there's approximately a 0.004% chance that that's going to be followed by the letter Z. So if we add up all these character frequencies, we can measure how likely a particular character combination is to actually occur. So today I'm releasing a tool called Freak, F-R-E-Q, for Frequency Table Generator. And what this will do is it'll measure hosts against character frequency pairs. So the first thing I do is I run F-R-E-Q, and I tell it to create a character frequency database called Demo. Then I'm going to tell it to toggle the case. By default, it's going to treat everything as lower case. I want this to be case sensitive, so I'm first going to toggle the case. Then I'm going to load my character frequency table. So I'm going to take a bunch of text documents that I downloaded from the Gutenberg project off of the internet, and I'm going to take all those text projects and I'm going to load them into my frequency table. In order to do that, I'm going to use the Python uh, program to run freak and tell it my normal file. Normal file is an option that tells it to read in a text file that has normal character frequencies in it read in the normal file for each of the files that's in my text document and load them into my demo frequency table. So now this goes through and it pulls up all these texts including War and Peace, A Tale of Two Cities, Tom Sawyer, Joiner, jo Journey to the Center of the Earth, uh, Dracula, uh, The Invisible Man, and many others. And what it's doing is it's pulling all the normal character pairs that it finds in those texts and loading them into my frequency table. Now, when you do this, here's my run a little bit slower. I sped it up in the video so that you wouldn't have to wait for it to process. Now, now that I've loaded my frequency table, I'm going to start measuring some normal and possibly abnormal domain names with the keyword measure. 
So I tell Freak to measure Google, and then I give it my demo frequency table. And it says Google has a frequency probability of 6.5. Clearinghouse has a frequency probability of 12. Now when I go back and I give it some malicious host names or random looking host names by pounding on the keyboard, you can see that this one has a randomness of 3. Pounding on the keyboard again, I get 1.9. Pounding on my keyboard again here, I'll get a frequency of approximately 1.3. So if we look here, I can see that those that are good have frequency probabilities above 5, where those that are known to be malicious, or at least it look random, are below 5. So I can use 5 as an approximate measure for identifying good hosts and bad hosts. And in fact, this does work with those same SkyBot and Sticks pieces of malware. But it's not a perfect system. If I take something like the FBI or the CIA, I plug in very small host names, it still says, all right, that has a probability of two, which is below five and not good. But one of the nice things about Freak is that it will allow you to learn hosts that travel across your network. So there's the dash normal option. When I run dash normal, that says, hey, I just saw CIA and I want to treat it as normal. So now you can see that the numbers for CIA changed. If I go back in and I run normal again, and I give it a weight of 10,000, then that says I saw the CIA 10,000 times. And now when I measure CIA, you can see that it comes back with a frequency probability of 20. This will allow you to dynamically learn hosts that you have on your network and tune your frequency tables automatically. So Freak has a couple of options here. If you do a Freak minus H, you'll see that you can measure, um, you can tell it what's normal, you can tell it what's odd, you can load frequency tables, um, you can also promote certain characters in the um, character tables, and it's really designed to give you the flexibility to dynamically learn hosts that you have in your environment and use it to then detect malicious host names going across the network. I'll show you tomorrow in my Internet Storm Center um, journal how you can use this in Python to automatically detect these via a sniffer um, or from logs as you parse them out.